Thanks, Bruce. There's been no shortage of big sporting events this year. The Olympics and the Paralympics obviously at the top of the list. But some of our lesser known Aussie athletes have also been going for gold recently in the Boomerang World Cup, believe it or not. Tegan George caught up with some of the sport's best to find out just what it takes to be a high flyer. I wish that I could fly into the sky. Bob Burble and David Shummy are two of Australia's greatest comeback kings. I absolutely love it. It's just a part of my life. In fact, these blokes are true blue champions in what would have to be one of the greatest Aussie sports. And I just love the, the magic you get from throwing a boomerang out. It goes around in a big circle, about 50 metres, come back and catch it. It's just marvellous. Bob's father, Cecil, literally wrote the rule book back in 1962. Since then, boomerang throwing has become serious business. All right, David, well, take us through all the different types of boomerangs we've got here. Started out with hunting type weapons, developed into returning two bladed boomerangs. We have competition hooks, long distance, lightweight carbon fibre, lightweight, flies a long time and now the little sporty, fast boomerang that we generally all use in competition, a tri-blader. At this year's World Cup, there were 13 countries and more than 100 competitors all battling to beat the Aussies at their own game. Well, the Boomerang World Cup came after the initial international tournament between the United States and America in 1981. The Americans came out here to Australia and, um, heaven forbid, after three test series, the Australians lost every one. But ever since, the Aussies have been flying high. I made the Guinness Book of Records in uh, 1983 and 1984, and I broke that record on three occasions, uh, with the last record being 36.33 seconds, which was about double what the average uh, boomerang thrower was able to achieve in that day. This is Australia. OK, fellas, well, this doesn't look too hard. What do you say you teach me a few tricks of the trade? No problems at all. Now, they say if you can throw a ball, you can throw a boomerang. But as I found out, it's not quite that easy. Imagine you're cracking a whip or serving a tennis ball. Aim a little bit above the horizon there, straight out in front of you. So okay, give it a go. we'll give it a shot. Hey, that wasn't too bad. <laughs> I don't know how it's supposed to come back to you. So while it's unlikely I'll be at the next World Cup, there is still one way to get a winning edge. Bob and David both make their own boomerangs, which has been instrumental in advancing the sport. In fact, David created this lightweight carbon fibre rang called the Buzz Whip, which helped him sell into the record books. The development of the boomerang has really uh, come right into a high uh, high-end sporting piece of equipment. Who knew these seemingly simple devices were so complex? You then have to shape the boomerang so you get the correct airfoils and the airfoils are the main things that make the boomerang work. So if you think you've got what it takes to be the next big thing in boomerang throwing, head to the Boomerang Association of Australia's website at www.boomerang.org.au. What makes a winning boomerang? A winning boomerang is the one you practice most with. <laughs> Yeah, we can't let the Americans beat us again, Tegan George reporting. Now, we all have our favourite...